yourself comfortable, find a comfortable way to sit, have some art materials around you, um, or drawing materials, and we will start to, yeah, come back to ourself. And I think I got technology figured out, so there shouldn't be any interruptions. Um, if you have been with me or were on yesterday's, we had some technical issues where the video actually shut off um, in the middle of the practice and I wasn't aware because I'm doing my own yoga practice with you because that's part of why this practice is important because if I'm embodying it, you're going to be embodying it. Um, but anyway, should have taken care of that. And yeah, I think there was a music issue as well where I don't think music is on shuffle today, so that should be less distracting as well. So thank you if you're joining me from live today or if you are watching this later. Um, this yoga practice is to allow you some time and space just for you. And I can't stress enough how important that is right now for you to take time for you, to nourish you, to replenish you, to recharge you. We are pushing and pulling a lot of feeling like we have to do, do, do and as well as feeling like we have to take care of others right now and maybe taking care of schedules and balancing out kids and, and work. Um, or it might just be that there's just so much overload and flooding of everything that's going on around with other people right now. And, um, and what's going on in the environment that you may feel overloaded, you may feel flooded. And when we do that, we go into survival mode. Um, when we get really anxious, when we get very hyper aroused, we, we go into the anxiety, the worries, the frets, the, the to-dos, right? The plans, the prepares, um, or we go into hypo arousal where we just become really lethargic, really um, down, no energy, no motivation. It can even move all the way you know, into the lowest part of the brain where we just shut down, we're numbing, we're dissociated, we're disconnecting, we are um, disengaging in life. So this practice, and as simple as these things sound, these are such easy action tools that you can take at any time. And I encourage you to just allow yourself to be as present as is available to you and have compassion with yourself for where you're at and what you're doing and what's going on in your world right now because we're really trying to balance a lot and there's a lot of shift and change and when our brain goes into that fear state it will automatically connect us into the way we have been dealing with things in the past or maybe in childhood um, and some of us also um, may be very internal with our feelings. We may not be, have ways to, to move it out. Um, and then it builds and builds and builds until it just like explodes. So, and then, or we shut down, you know. And then if we shut down, then sometimes we just explode just to feel. This is our nervous system trying to regulate. So the tools and, and the practices that we do through this practice is going to um, be ways that are going to engage your nervous system, that are going to um, stimulate the vagus nerve, which tells our body to move into rest and digest instead of fear and flight. Um, it's going to be able to boost the immune system. It's going to allow you to just be present, to say, to, to notice. So that's where we're going to start with just noticing, because every time we allow ourselves to notice, we are in the present moment. So as you make yourself comfortable, 
as you have found hopefully a quiet space around you in your home in a room that can be just yours for the next hour you're welcome to grab a journal or something to draw with or something to write with if you are open to exploring with color and line i highly encourage it And allowing yourself to notice, to, to become aware of anything you're feeling, anything that you're noticing. This could be feelings, could be I'm feeling tired, I'm feeling exhausted, I'm feeling drained, um, I'm feeling irritable, I'm feeling angry. Um, it could be what you are noticing maybe in the body with body sensations could be achiness or tired um, it could be thoughts it could be from where you've been what you've been doing today or, or what's going on next but I invite you just to allow yourself to be present with whatever's coming up for you and then give it a place to go this is what I was talking about earlier, where we keep everything internal, we keep it all inside. But if we allow ourselves a few moments to just be present with what we're feeling, just from a space of observation, observation, so observing what, what's coming up for you. It could be just what's going on in the room. So giving it a place to go. This isn't for anybody else but you. This, we're not making artwork. This is letting the body's intelligence have a voice. Letting just whatever is coming up have a place to go. So one way to start is to just choose a color that stands out to you the most. One color that stands out to you the most right now in this present moment and then not from a head space but just from the body just from the awareness letting the hand make whatever marks it wants to on the page there's no right or wrong way to do this if available doing it without judgment Meaning don't judge what's coming out, don't criticize it, don't shame it. We're so good at that when it comes to expressing ourselves, right? Just allowing it to have a place to go. And if you're just not feeling it, if it's just not there with colors, or you just don't feel in that place to do that, just write down some words, just some words that you're noticing that are coming up for you. Maybe it's vulnerable. Maybe it's tired. Maybe it's sore. Maybe it's just drained, whatever it is, give it a place to go. And then as you feel ready, and in your own time, setting that aside, and allowing yourself to find a comfortable way onto the mat where you can have yourself in an upright, upright seated form, allowing the legs to be in front of you, like one crossed in front of the other, or you can stack one leg on top of the other, or you can always sit back on your heels. Um, use pillows, use blankets, whatever you need to make yourself comfortable. To spend the beginning of this yoga practice 
practice awareness, to practice noticing. Because every time we do that, it takes us out of that fight or flight. It takes us out of that survival mode, those survival emotions that keep us heightened or keep us depleted. Anytime we allow ourselves to practice coming back to center and being in the present moment, we are out of our headspace. So one, one, one action you can do that works so well to bring yourself back to center is to use your arms with intention and just gathering all parts of you back from where you've given your time, your attention, your awareness, your energy, your thoughts, your feelings, and just calling that all back to center, all back to your breath, back to home. And you can do this a few times if you want, and this is important, especially for empaths, for highly sensitive people that give your energy when you feel all the feels, Anytime you've given your, your time, your attention, your energy, whether it was a phone call to a parent or something you've seen on social media, just anytime you've given your engagement, it creates a connection. And, and we, we end up holding things, not intentionally, but we end up holding things and not realizing it. And so we, we have ourselves kind of scattered. And so allowing yourself to return, return back to center, return back to home, or return back to your breath. Just bringing yourself back to your breath. Breath moving in and breath moving out. And it may be for the first time today of just feeling yourself breathe. Feeling that breath. And if you're visual, if you're really visual, then you might be able to even see or sense or feel like those, those little sparks of light, those little parts of, of your energy, maybe different colors, different whatever, that just, that connection. Or maybe you can just feel what that feels like to take that breath of awareness. So that's one small action you can take to ground right now in this moment. And if you'd like to continue to bring your awareness into your space, you can also use your senses, noticing what the eyes see, what the, the hands feel, noticing what colors or patterns stand out to you in the room. And this is practicing awareness from a place of curiosity, of interest, of observation, where we don't have to make anything happen, we don't have to be doing, we're just noticing. And as simple as it sounds, it really does switch us away from using the part of the brain that puts us into our survival emotions. So just noticing, becoming aware. Breathing into that, breathing into the textures around you or the temperatures. You might even gently close the eyes, becoming aware of the sounds around you. just from that place of observation. And if you haven't already, I invite you to close your eyes or just lower the gaze of your eyes. And bring your attention to your breath. Bring your attention to your head, behind your eyes. You 
might even be able to start to feel the sensation of breath around the nose. And if you'd like to experiment, you might create a gentle infinity sign with your eyes closed or your gaze lowered and just letting the eyes move slowly back and forth from the left side to the right side. This creates a balancing of the right and left hemisphere of the brain. It also engages the nervous system, the parasympathetic nervous system. Helps to balance emotions, thoughts, energy. Just gently passing over the bridge of the nose each time until you've come to center. You might even just allow yourself to become aware of any sensations around the eyes, the nose. Continuing to drop that awareness. Maybe even noticing sensations through the back of the throat or the roof of the mouth or the soft palate. You might feel like coolness of the breath. You might just be able to feel any of those sensations, and if not, that's okay too. Continuing that awareness down the throat. We're just dropping our attention from the head and moving it down to the body. We're dropping down from the head space down to the heart space, the shoulders, the arms, the hands, noticing where they feel best to you. You can rest on your lap or in your lap or at heart center. If you like, you can choose to place a hand or both hands at heart center, just becoming aware of the rise and fall of breath. You don't have to do anything special, but just notice. Noticing the breath. You might notice the rhythm of the breath. You might even feel the breath kind of catching as you breathe in or as you exhale. That's okay, this is normal. As you continue to become aware of your breath, you might feel that start to lengthen out a little more or create a little more fluidity, but however it is right now in this moment is completely okay. You're just noticing. Feeling or noticing breath moving in and breath moving out from the nose or even the mouth. Feeling that rise and fall through the heart center the chest, the lungs, the rib cage. And you can place your hands anywhere you need to to create that awareness or to feel that breath. Anywhere you're anywhere else you're noticing sensations. If you place your hands on your rib cage, you might feel it expand out 
towards the sides, towards the insides of the arm. And as you exhale, you might feel yourself gently lengthening up through the torso, feeling those muscles contract. And it's okay if your mind begins to wander, or takes you away into a thought. As soon as you notice that your mind has traveled, you can just practice bringing yourself back to your breath. Back with the next inhale, or back with the next exhale. Each time you allow yourself the opportunity to practice that, it strengthens the part of the brain, the newer part of the brain, or the limbic part, the, the newer brain that allows us to have rational thinking and logic. It sends blood flow to the prefrontal cortex where our complex thinking is, where we can see a bigger picture, where we can see the opportunities, where we can connect into the creative problem solving, where we can find our resourcefulness. Breath, breath is your light tool. Breath is your connection back to yourself. And breath is your connection back to feeling. And so sometimes it may not feel like we want to feel. We don't want to feel the unpleasant feelings, but when we shut off feeling, we shut off the pleasant and the unpleasant. And when you allow yourself opportunity to feel from a different place, from a heart-centered place, from a place of awareness, curiosity, interest, observation, and not from the headlands of the fear, of the overwhelming, of the flooding, of the, the doubts, the insecurities, when we allow ourselves to see and feel and know from this other lens from this other part of our brain that allows us to have some distance from what we're feeling and be able to connect in to our higher awareness, to our higher self, and be able to sort out and sort through those feelings without becoming overwhelmed or flooded or wanting to just push it away. So this practice of bringing yourself back to your breath over and over again when your mind has wandered will allow you to con continue to connect quicker and faster to the, the newer brain, the, the more complex thinking, the higher thinking, the rational, um, over the, the fight or flight, over the part of the brain where um, we live in our survival emotions. So breathe. Breathing in and breathing out. Allowing that awareness to continue down to the abdomen. And you might even feel your whole torso expand as you inhale. Filling up your breath through your whole torso and contracting as you exhale. And this breath, this deep, this three-part breath is what I'm talking about that allows you to get to your new brain, to your limbic system, to your limbic brain, to your thinking and your logic and your reasoning. Uh, it's when we are we're used to breathing or when we get nervous or scared or anxious or fearful or angry or when we've been like, you know, stooped a lot during the day or at our desk or um, just feeling depleted, breath only gets down to our chest. It only gets to about here. And when it does that, 
our body signals to our brain that we're in danger. So it turns on our survival emotions automatically. We don't have a choice, it just does it because the wiring um, that goes back and forth with our nervous system. So this, this message that's sending to our brain that we need to prepare, that we need to worry, that we need to get our things together, that we need to um, be on alert. It sends up our alert signals, right? Where everything, we're just kind of on edge. So if just the simple tool of being able to take that deeper breath allows the body to respond to the brain, a different part of the brain that will move you into rest and digest and ease and it will balance mood and it will balance digestion. So you might feel yourself as you continue to practice your breath, you will feel yourself maybe sighing or coughing or yawning or burping or farting. Like all of these are digestion. That's what the nervous system does. That's what this um, breathing does is it allows our body to start functioning again and moving and, and moving out that stuck energy. So just know that how your body is responding to stress is normal. And when you practice your, your breathing, that how your body responds to that is normal. So we practice a lot of different types of breath throughout the weeks, throughout the five weeks. And from week five out of the eight right now, Thank you so much for being a part of that. We've practiced breath that allows you to continue to turn that part of the brain on um, with the S breath, the buzz breath, um, the ratio breathing. And really what all those have in common is they allow our exhale to be longer. They allow our to breathe, to breathe slower and to breathe deeper. And when we do that, that is what's going to move us into rest and digest. So today we're just gonna breathe in through the nose and exhale through the mouth. And as you do that, breathing in, filling up your torso as far as you can go and then exhaling slowly out through the mouth as you soften the jaw, you'll just let that breath move out. And, and just moving that out, you might even feel those muscles in the core center kind of pushing back towards the spine as you exhale all of that out. And then I invite you to pause before you take that next breath and just notice, just notice any sensations in the body. And let's do that. Let's do that breath four times. So you're welcome to practice with me. So take a breath in, filling up the torso and exhaling through the mouth. And pause before breathing in that breath in again.
as you exhale, you might notice that the muscles in our root center start to soften. Because as we allow ourselves to exhale through the mouth, as we breathe out through the mouth, it softens the jaw. And as we, as I think I've mentioned before, as we soften the muscles in the roof of the mouth or the soft palate and the jaw, it also signals to the lower part of our body. It's that, it's that nerve, it's that, uh, the, the system we have that runs back and forth between the body and the brain. It allows our, the rest of our body to release that tension, to release the muscles, the tension in the muscles. So you might feel yourself sink a little more until you into your pillow or your mat. You might feel your legs feel a little heavier, or you might just become aware of any sensations around the lower abdomen, the lower back, or feeling your legs underneath you, your feet underneath you, feeling yourself making contact with the mat, and the mat with the floor. Feeling yourself right here, where you belong, where you don't have to be doing anything else, where you don't have to be anywhere else, where all your needs are met enough for you to be right here. And breathe. Exhaling out. And if you'd like, you can Imagine, sense, or feel exhaling out through the root center, out through each foot. And you can even create some roots, extending down your roots like tree roots. Just inviting those roots to move all the way down into the floor and down into the earth. As far down as they want to expand. Feeling those roots connect into the earth, into the planet to nourish you, to recharge, to replenish, to reconnect you to that life source energy, to that breath, to that breath of the planet. That life source energy is just breath. That's our breath. So connecting your heart to the heart of the planet you might imagine, sense, or feel these roots going all the way down into the center until you reach the heart of Mother Earth on this beautiful Earth Day. We should make every day Earth Day, but this one especially, being if we can't get outside and connect, can't connect to the Earth, then you can always visualize, imagine, or sense yourself connected, rooted, down into the planet, rounding you here, centering you, and knowing that your roots connect your heart to the heart of the earth. Breath moving in and breath moving out, knowing that these roots can send up this life source energy up through your roots, up around you, up to your heart center, and even expand out into each arm and out into each hand, which are extensions of our heart. So you might breathe in and breathe up this awareness, or you can gently use the body to move that energy up and through and out, and you can expand that all the way up to the top of the head, to the crown center, and this is just seated sun salutation, so you can bring that energy up all the way to the top of the head, and just letting that move out and around you, creating this bubble of light, this energetic, life source energy, 
space. Inviting the hands to come up overhead. And you can connect to whatever life source energy above you connect to. The sun, the moon, the stars, the planets, universal consciousness, universal love, divine consciousness, whatever that is to you. Inviting that as the hands come together at center, bringing that down to your heart center. Pulling that cosmic light down through the top of the head behind the eyes, the throat, just feeling that move all the way down to the heart center and expanding out and through the front of the heart center and the back of the shoulder blades, out into our wings. And you can do that a few times in the seated sun salutation or you can just do the movement. Whatever choice is up to you. You always have choice in this practice. Just inviting that awareness all the way down. We can even move all the way down to the roots. Noticing any sensations. You're welcome to pause here a moment. And just feel yourself supported and held below you. Connected, rooted, grounded. And feeling yourself connected above and all around you. Feeling yourself held and supported. You might even experience what it feels like to breathe from this space. This space that is just yours, that doesn't belong to anyone else but you. This is your space. space where we can also hear below the noise of the head lens, below the noise of any of the thoughts, where we can create intentions for ourselves, and that could be just to be present or to breathe. to notice. So if you like, you can create an intention for the rest of your practice or just be. We'll continue to move and to create some more awareness. And as we do this, I invite you to allow yourself to be present and anchor in that present awareness with your breath, feeling into any sensations, knowing that you always have choice. If anything feels unpleasant or uncomfortable, you can always move into a different form. If it feels painful, you can always shift out of it. You don't have to push through anything. This is not that type of yoga. This yoga has choices. You are the one feeling and responding. This is not coming from a headspace. It's using the body's intelligence and resources to feel into what feels right to you. So take a breath. We'll begin with the neck and just letting the head move over towards the shoulder. Noticing any sensations on the opposite side. Going only as far as feels comfortable to you before coming back to center and to the other side. Breath moving in and breath moving out. Coming back to center as you're ready. You might even tilt the ear down towards the shoulder. 
and the shoulders don't have to come up they can just stay where they're at you might even notice what it feels like to gently press down through the shoulder you might feel more of a lengthening down the side of the neck if that feels pleasant before moving to the other side one side may want to move differently than the other and that's okay each side has different needs each side has different ways of wanting to be noticed and wanting to be nurtured letting the head come back to center dropping the chin down towards the chest you're welcome to create a gentle rocking from shoulder to shoulder You might even feel the temperature raising in the body. Do what you need to do to make yourself comfortable. Noticing any sensations along the back of the neck. The movements don't have to be very big. They can be really small. Each movement with the neck allows for awareness. You can even use the fingertips to create a gentle touch some nourishment or self-care for you. When we use the, the fingertips, you can create some gentle pressure or gentle circles along the neck, above the shoulders, and below the base of the skull. This is where we hold a lot of our tension and tightness, a lot of our stress. This also will engage the nervous system it will engage that vagus nerve that signals to our body to release tension to find balance so feeling in this is just letting the fingertips explore however that feels pleasant to you a touch that feels comfortable to you all the way up to the top of the head or to the base of the skull along that occipital ridge or the back of the head we have all these pressure points you might find what pressure feels comfortable to you um, or you might use tapping or you might use your finger fingernails this is just a time where you can explore what feels comfortable all the way up and as you do this you might notice that breath is just maybe moving a little easier breathing into anything that feels pleasant up around the ears and all the nerve endings along the ears ears are connected to our thoughts to everything we're taking in your mind is going and going and going your ears might be really sensitive it might feel pleasant even in front of the ears which you can trace all the way down to the jaw or up to the temples notice where the fingertips want to go where they're drawn what kind of pressure feels comfortable you can even lift the chin up towards the ceiling and these may seem like just simple practices it may you know may question like why are we doing this the head may be questioning like why are we doing this all of these things help engage the parasympathetic nervous system all of these touches where we are creating pressure and awareness um, to the lymph nodes that run down the side of the neck and our jaw where our upper and lower jaw connect this is where we hold stress and when we allow this touch it moves the energy it moves the stuck energy but it also stimulates like the nerves the, the nervous system it engages it with 
much as what we want to do. It moves to um, the blood flow and the energy moving to the, the prefrontal cortex and the parts of the brain that help with logic and reasoning and rationalization and higher thinking and it also releases tension in the muscles. Um, it, does, it does so many things to our body. It helps alkaline our body. It helps boost immune system. It helps balance the right and left hemisphere of the brain. Um, what else does it do? I think it even lowers blood pressure. I know it lowers blood pressure. I think it may lower blood sugar. Um, so continue to just let the fingertips explore wherever that feels pleasant. The temples, the cheekbones, between the eyes, all the way to the top of the head to the crown center. And using the fingertips or fingernails in the right hemisphere, the left hemisphere, and the part that connects, that integrates the two right in between. This is where we connect into higher thinking, awareness, where we see the possibilities and opportunities, where we see things through a new lens. And you might even create some gentle tapping on the top of the head. I think we might have done this last week, but it's really easy and a quick action tool you can take for balance. But if you create like a C with your hands, this is a body talk um, practice of connecting the head and the heart, but it balances out the head, the head and, and the heart. So tapping on the top of the head with the right and left hemisphere and then tapping over the thalamus. So um, the collarbone, right below the collarbone, you can use your whole palm. Just if you're trying to narrow in on the spot, just use your whole palm. And breathe. This creates a, an emotional balance. And there's no magic number. You just go until it feels regulated. We have all of these simple tools, all these quick tools available for when we need. And I encourage you to practice these even beyond the session so that they can be your go-tos as you need them. So continuing to stretch down the spine, letting the shoulders move up towards the ears and back down. You might even gently let the chin move up and down. Engaging that vagus nerve. You can even create some gentle rocking. You might notice if you want to move a little or if you want to move a lot, you can extend the hands out in front of you, bending the elbows and circling with the elbows. You could always reverse that and move one at a time. There are lots of choices. Moving in and breath moving out. Opening up the back of the shoulder blades and the heart center. You can continue to do that in seated form as you're in cat and cow. Letting the hands rest on the knees and rounding the back, drop 
dropping the chin towards the chest and rolling the tailbone forward as you stretch and cat form and then reversing that lifting the chin and tailbone up as you arch and cow form if you'd like to create breath with movement you can always inhale as you come up and exhale as you round and come down You can even move this out to the side, stretching out to the side as well as in front and to the other side, creating some gentle circles or mandalas. And if you're up in tabletop form, um, stretching out to the side and back in Disco Kitty. So fun name. So yes, if you are done being seated or if you'd like to shift or change your movement, um, another choice is to always move these, not always, but you can move these into tabletop form, letting the knees rest under the hips and the wrists under the shoulders. moving in and breath moving out. Stretching to the side, creating those same circles. Just notice what shape the body wants to move and go with that. You can just stick with the cat and cow or you can Find your way into balancing forms from tabletop by extending the leg behind and a hand out in front. With breath moving in and breath moving out. Becoming aware of that core center. And at any time, you can always make your way back into child's form where you don't have to be doing anything but just be. If your mind becomes distracted, just bring yourself back with the next inhale. Eventually, when you find your way back into child's form, sitting back on the heels, you can let the torso rest on top of the legs or in between the legs. Coming down to rest on your forearms or using your pillow or blanket to support your neck and head. It's another option. So this is your time, you're invited to experiment, explore what feels best to you, and spend a few moments in rest form. And if anything is unpleasant or uncomfortable to you, remember you always have the choice to ease out of the form and into something that does feel better. Breath moving in and breath moving out. Continuing to let that breath anchor you here to the present moment.
those forms, lungs feel pleasant to you or feels right to you. You're welcome to stay with the stillness. Or if you'd like, you can make your way up into a downward dog form by coming back up into tabletop. Pressing up through the hips. Curling the toes underneath. And creating a gentle stretch through the back of the legs. You might even create some gentle yeses and gentle noes with the head. Noticing what it feels like to release the tension from the neck and head. And you can do this in tabletop too. You can rest on the hands and the knees or even the forearms and shake the tension from the neck and head. Or you can just be. You might even experiment pressing back into both heels at the same time pressing down through the palms and each finger. And then eventually, whenever you feel ready, making your way out of child's form or out of downward dog and eventually Walking the hands towards the feet or the feet towards the hands. Keeping the knees bent and finding yourself in a gentle forward fold. Folding at the hips and letting the hands rest down by the feet. Or grasping the opposite elbow with the opposite hand. If there's any dizziness or anything feels uncomfortable, keep your eyes open. You can always move your feet out further to hip width apart. You can let the elbows rest on the knees, or you can even use a seat of a chair or a couch in front of you to, to stretch and hold balance. So just do what feels best to you and go with that. Gentle yeses and gentle noes. Then eventually, whenever you feel ready, you're invited to bend the knees, slowly rolling back up into standing mountain form. You might even just pause here a moment. Feeling or noticing your feet on the floor. Feeling yourself connected and grounded. You might even move gently back and forth from toe to heel. creating some really small movement, just to see if you can find that place of center between the toe and heel. Until that movement becomes still. Then you might gently roll the foot from the outside to the inside if that feels pleasant. You 
and just see where that place of center is from the inside to the outside. And then as we continue to bring our awareness back up from our feet, you might bring your awareness to your hip and your tailbone, your pelvis. You might even just notice from the left side to the right side where that place of center is. Might even be just a gentle shift. Letting the shoulders and heart line up and then the head and the chin. Notice where the hands feel best to you. They're by your side. Or at heart center. And if you'd like, you can continue to stay with the stillness, the mountain form. Just noticing your breath. Allowing that to anchor you here to your present moment. Or if you'd like to move into balancing form, as we practiced last week, you can shift your center over to one side. And you can, you're welcome to gently lift the heel, the opposite foot, bending that knee. And you might choose to just stay here. You don't have to be doing anything just be. If you're having any balancing issues, you can always move to being closer to the wall and just use a hand to help support you into balancing form. Or you can use uh, the back of a chair or the side of the couch whatever works. If you'd like to move this up into tree form or move into more of a balancing form, you can angle out the knee towards the side and let that foot come to rest either beside the leg or on the leg in tree form. You can experiment where the hands feel best to you. You might like them overhead over the top of the head, or it can always be at heart center. If you'd like, you can find an option uh, in front of you for the eyes to go. And it's okay if you come in and out of the form. Just noticing And one, might, one side may feel very different than the other. So whenever you feel ready, you can always find your way back to center and to the other side. Noticing both feet on the floor and shifting center to the other side. back to center whenever you're ready. We'll make our way down to the mat. We'll be adding in more standing forms next week to give you a few other options. I want to make sure that we have enough time to move into rest form for you for the last few minutes of your yoga practice. So gently finding your way back to the mat. 
Bending your knees. Allowing the hands to help assist you and lying back. And you can stretch out your legs, letting the hands rest on the rib cage or out into a T formation. You can use a blanket or eye pillow or whatever you'd like to make yourself comfortable for the last few minutes of this yoga practice where you can just be. Where you don't have to be anywhere else. You don't have to be doing anything else. Experimenting with what feels best to you, either on your back or on your side, or you can even angle yourself up to the edge of the wall or the couch and let the legs rest on top of the couch. You're invited to let that breath anchor you here. Noticing what muscles you don't have to be using. With each exhale, letting that breath sink you a little deeper into the floor. Breath moving in and breath moving out. You're invited to do one last body scan, starting at the top of the head and working down to the tips of the toes. Anywhere that you're noticing any sensations that you'd like to create just a little more comfort or awareness around, you're invited to breathe into those places. Breathing in, lighten energy, and exhaling out any tension, stress, or worries. I breathe in, lighten energy, and I exhale out any tension, stress, or worries. Eventually, as you feel ready, bringing the awareness back to your fingers and your toes, your wrists, and your ankles. And you might start to gently bend the knees and making your way over to your side. You might let your arms support your head and your knees move up towards the body. Continuing to just focus on your breath. Feeling the floor beneath you. Feeling it support you, hold you, and cradle you. And then as 
as you're ready, gently inviting the hands to help press you back up into seated form. You might pause here a moment and just notice if there's been any shift or change since the beginning of your practice. Maybe in your thoughts, maybe in your feelings, or maybe in your breath. And if not, that's okay too. But you're welcome to use whatever creative expression or writing you were doing before the yoga practice and move back into it connecting to whatever color or colors or words stand out to you the most now. Take as much time as you would like to explore that. I just want to thank you all so much for being here, whether you are here live or you're watching it later. Thank you so much for being a part of this yoga practice and letting me be a part of it with you. As always, the light in you brings out the light in me. So thank you so much. And I hope whatever pleasant sensations, whatever feelings you were able to connect to, that you bring those out with you the rest of the day, the rest of the evening, the rest of your week and your weekend. And we'll see you next time. Namaste.